Quote, what is up, gamers? It's your boy, Thornbush, number one conqueror, number one TND, number one lawbringer, number one highlander, number one everything. And I'm back at it again with another guide. Today, we're going to be covering Conqueror, who I consider to be my best dual character. Uh, last season, I sat around GM70 with him. Not that rank really matters in this game. And usually when I'm doing scrims with other competitive players, I can give them a pretty good run for their money. Uh, and today we're just going to be taking a comprehensive look at the character. What are his max punishes, what are his defensive options, offensive options, tech, just everything. So hopefully you'll learn something new and improve as a player, and I hope everybody enjoys. I'll leave some timestamps on screen here so you could skip to a particular portion of the video if you're interested. But without further ado... Let's cover our special section, How to Counter Conqueror, for all the non-Conqueror mains watching this video. Let's get right into it. Press the roll button when you see orange. Alright, let's get the basics out of the way. Heavy parry, you get a shield bash into light, 10 stamina damage, 13 regular damage. If you're low on stamina, you don't have to do the shield bash portion, you just do straight into light. You get your 13 damage, no stamina damage. Light parry, top heavy, 33 damage. On a guard break, you get a side heavy, 25 damage. On a wall splat, if you're close to him, you get a top heavy for 33 damage. On a max range guard break throw, you can get a charge top heavy for 44. On an out of stamina parry, you get side heavy into side heavy for 55 damage. Don't do a change top heavy, it's slower, unsafe on wake up, and deals the same damage. On an out of stamina guard break, you throw the side, do a shield bash for 10 stamina damage, charge a heavy for 44 damage. It's not actually parryable, even though it looks like it, so you can bait a parry from the enemy through it for two side heavies. The punish is unsafe if they don't go for the parry, so be sure to follow up if you predict a guard break. Superior block heavies are timed earlier than a regular parry. Uh, they're less consistent, but if you can land them during the last 100 milliseconds of the active frames, you could usually land the full heavy. When charging a heavy, you could still use the superior block to counter moves. They land much more consistently since they're unblockable, deal 44 from top, 33 from sides. Superior block on dodge is same as heavy parry, shield bash into light. Lastly, if you block anything in full block, you get a 30 damage flail uppercut. Alright, I'm sure plenty of you already do all of these max punishes, so let's move straight into defensive options. Because I am the option select man, I am the red option select man, that's me, that's my job! The one that everyone is probably the most familiar with are guard break immune heavies. It doesn't matter if it's a hard feint, a soft feint, that guard break bouncing off and you're hitting them between 25 and 33 damage. This is one of Kong's riskiest option selects, but it's also the most rewarding, so if you predict a guard break, go for it. Soft cancelling to shield uppercut after they bounce off, confirmed. If the enemy goes for a zone option select parry on light parry timing, your shield uppercut will probably be in trouble. However, if you soft cancel into a full block instead, you can usually catch that and be punished with a flail uppercut. This also applies to his charge heavies if you go for a superior block. 33 to 44 damage. Conqueror's guard swap while he's charging a heavy is 300 milliseconds compared to the usual 100 milliseconds. So if you're expecting a quick attack to come out, you can soft cancel into a full block on prediction to punish with the flail uppercut 30 damage. So this option select should be used quite a bit in your usual matches, and that's your charged heavy option select. Basically, you just hold down your heavy input on light timing, and if it doesn't turn out to be a light, then you just, you're charging your heavy. And if it turns out to be a light, you get the parry for it. Uh, you can also go for a parry on the heavy on the same timing by releasing that charge heavy, so time your superior block against the enemy's heavy. So you can basically do a light parry attempt and a superior block attempt against the enemy's heavy. Alternatively, you don't even have to go for a superior block attempt against the enemy's heavy. You can just cancel your charge heavy option select and your guard will always stay active. So you'll not only block the heavy, but you'll recover fast enough to counter guard break. 
keep in mind you will not get a punish against this guard break as you would if you did a superior block since your superior block heavies are guard break. An alternate alternative to this option is to soft faint into your full block after you go for the light carry. Uh, this depends on how slow the enemy's heavy is. If it's too fast, you're not going to be able to get into your full block fast enough. And it's more effective if the heavy has a soft faint to it. So that way you can enter your full block, that beats the heavy, and that beats the soft faint. Your last option now, charge heavy option select, is to dodge at the thing. This is good if the enemy has a soft faint to bash, because then you can just avoid it, or a soft faint into just a regular attack, because then you can go for a superior block on dodge. Now here's a big one, boish. As we all know, superior block on heavies only comes in the direction of the heavy, right? Well, wrong! You're a fool to think the mechanics in this game work the way they're supposed to. If you unlock your heavy, that superior block is active in all three guard directions. This allows you to counter things that are unreactable, like dagger cancel, since you'll get have superior block in both the direction of the heavy and of the unreactable dagger cancel. There's still guard break immune, but it only comes from right side, so it's always 25 damage. Conqueror also has dodge block, which is a really healthy mechanic, not sarcastic at all. Basically, when you dodge in whichever direction, your guard swaps to that direction in 0 milliseconds. Usually it's 100 milliseconds. So what does that let you do? It lets you react to stuff that isn't normally reactable. So things like chained light, stagger cancel, berserker faint into 400 millisecond lights. All those things could be blocked on reaction using dodge block. Uh, it all, there's also a 100 millisecond startup for your regular superior block on dodge. So if you don't block it, you might even deflect it for your shield bash. This isn't always true, because sometimes hit or block stun can prevent you from dodging, but as long as you're in neutral and you haven't been touched by anything yet, you can just go about it. Speaking of superior block on dodge, did you know that you can counter both lights and heavies on the same timing? Also worth noting that some heavies are so slow that a hard faint into guard break will not catch you, so unless they have a soft faint as well, it's actually unpunishable. You can also go for a superior block on heavy timing and react to the faint animation with your shield bash to stuff a guard break. When you're using full block, you want to use it when you're outside of the enemy's guard break range, but within their attacking range. You'll still be within the range for a faint guard break usually, but at least you're not going to have that threat of just a neutral guard break catching you off guard. If the enemy does try to catch you with a faint guard break, you can just exit on reaction to the faint animation and counter it just like you normally would. Or, if you're an epic gamer like me, you can cancel out on reaction to the faint animation and heavy attack to stuff a guard break. I'll often use full block against people trying to outrange me or poggers champion zerk mains that do a billion whiffs and faints in front of you. Just enter full block on prediction and you can usually catch something that they decide to let go on you. And then if you do predict a guard break again, you can react to the faint animation. Zone option select is pretty much Conqueror's panic button, and this is usually the option select you use when you freak out and you couldn't make a split second decision on which other option select to use. Uh, it deals 10 damage, it's 600 milliseconds, so it's the easiest parry in the world if baited, but it beats a lot of stuff, faint guard break, soft faints into lights, into heavies, do it on light timing, you could beat a heavy, all sorts of stuff. But just don't overuse it, that's one of the biggest mistakes that beginner conks can make. The rest of your option selects are much, much stronger. Since it's not really worth risking 10 damage for a heavy parry, I'll often use zone outside of the enemy's parry range and just try to catch something that they throw out there in the neutral. Something important to keep in mind when using your zone is you have hard faint recovery after you faint the first swing. Which basically means there's a short period of time where you don't have a guard active in any direction and you're vulnerable to damage. Uh, this is really good to keep in mind when the enemy has a heavy timed just when your hard faint recovery is going to go. In that case, you're going to want to go for the second swing on your zone because it's much better to risk taking a heavy parry versus a 40 damage heavy that's timed within that gap. One good use of zone is you basically have a safe unlock sprint. Uh, for those that don't know, unlock sprint is unlocking, sprinting in the other direction away from the enemy, basically to re recover your stamina. Uh, Conqueror can block while he's unlocked by using his zone, 
Uh, it's only 100 millisecond startup on the full block, so you can really easily just react to the big red exclamation point above the enemy. And it pretty much allows you to safely disengage when you want to without too much risk of being punished for it. So that's all of Conqueror's defensive options and option slicks. Uh, if you make really good use of all of them, it's very difficult for the enemy to actually get damage in on you. Uh, I didn't even mention that his side dodge shield bash is basically one of the best dodge attacks in the game because if something has recovery, you could probably punish it. But there you go, I'll mention that there. Uh, but one thing, if I were to put one more la last piece of advice here is don't go for a parry on every single indicator. I do that, it's a big mistake on my part. If you want to be unpredictable, sometimes just don't even go for a parry. Make the enemy question themselves that whether or not you're even going to go for a parry. Which parry input are you going to go for? It, you could really stay on top of the mind games like this, and it makes it even that much more difficult for the enemy to try to deal damage. But with that aside, we're going to move into Conqueror's offensive options. Really cool offense. I love it when the enemy just rolls on orange. I love it when the enemy unlocks sprints away. And I don't have anything to chase him down. And I just have to stare at him while they began to stare. The first thing anybody ever learns about playing Conqueror is not to use side lights. I, I don't I'm not here to change your mind on that, they're still bad. Your in-chain side light attacks are pretty garbled here as well, because pressing the back walk button just causes them to whiff. Fortunately, Conqueror's chain top light actually has better range and tracking than the chain side light. So if you land a shield bash, usually you're going to want to go for a side light confirmed off of it, just so you have that top light pressure in-chain afterwards. Same side chain light is probably the worst move in the game. It's a 900 millisecond light attack. It's terrible. Do not use it. Although I can't really advocate for using the Conqueror's Chain Lights in the first place because they're only 500 milliseconds and 13 damage, so they're more, more likely than not going to get blocked or parried. But if you are going to go for a Chain Light, you're going to want to do it after a Flail Uppercut. The reason is, after a Flail Uppercut, it's 500 milliseconds from all directions. No such thing as the 900 millisecond same side Chain Lights. And they all have better tracking, so you cannot be back walk. You can cancel your full block into a top light, which has the potential of throwing your enemy off guard. But if you do it like more than once or twice, you're probably going to get red really easily. Just something to keep in mind that you can have maybe use once in a while. If you do use this, it's probably better to use it while you're in chain with the soft faint uh, to full block out of your heavies, because if you do it from neutral, it's going to be a lot more obvious. You can also dodge straight out of full block, which allows you to access your shield bash really, really quickly. That's another thing you can keep in mind to throw people off guard, because full block is typically associated with being a defensive tool, and having an offensive tool jump out of nowhere can definitely be a little wonky. Let's just quickly run through the basic mix-ups of Shield Bash, just in case somebody isn't aware. Uh, if you dodge on Buffered Bash timing, you can recover fast enough to counter a Dash Forward Guard Break. I forgot to get a recording of it, but of course, if you do a Delayed Bash, you can punish somebody dodging on Buffered Bash timing. And if someone Prediction dodges on Delayed Bash timing, they can get hit by the Dash Forward Guard Break. Now, let's get into some spicy Thornbush tech. When you're holding your charge heavy stance, you can dodge cancel out of it just like you can with full block, uh, so you can still access your shield bash similar to Cal you can in neutral, but pressing the guard break button while you're charging will make you do your shield uppercut move, which is usually the soft faint bash out of your heavy attacks. This is actually really good because it has the same dodge timing as your delayed bash, but the orange indicator starts immediately. There's two really great things about this. Number one is all the players that have the reaction times to dodge on orange can no longer negate the mix-up because if they try to dodge on orange, they're just gonna get caught with a shield uppercut because it has the same dodge timing as your delayed bash. Number two is if you use it similarly to how you would use your delayed bash, shield uppercut is actually less punishable. A prediction dodge on delayed bash timing can be punished with guard break, Whereas, the shield uppercut always has a late dodge timing, so even if you dodge it, you're never, ever going to get a guard break on it. If you're not a fan of flicker tech, I advise you advert your eyes now, because I'm about to give an input for a pretty significant flicker tech break. 
And it's the one I've been showing throughout the video every time I didn't have clips on what I really wanted to talk about. So here's how it looks from the enemy's perspective. And it's just an unblockable symbol flicker, but the synergy with your shield bash, shield uppercut, and unblockable charge heavies is what makes that flicker significant because you have that bash and unblockable pressure to go along with it. Uh, when I was counting frames, I think I measured at the most, it was three frames running at 30 FPS, so that should be a 100 millisecond flicker. It plays the audio cue for a bash too, which I think is probably the most valuable part about it, since often audio reaction times are faster than your visual reaction times. And of course, as you can see, you could chain them into one another. So here's how it looks from your perspective. And basically how it works is since when you're charging a heavy, you have 300 millisecond guard switch recovery, you swap to one guard, press the guard break input for a shield uppercut right before your guard becomes active, and then swap back to a different guard. If you can of course do this multiple times to chain them as I've shown you, and you can tell that you got it right just by the little flicker of your guard being active in the direction you first swap to. Here's just a quick example of me switching between flickering and doing a buffered bash. If you can bait a dodge with the flicker, you could punish that on reaction with a buffered bash. Way more difficult input, but you can also bait a dodge with the flicker, cancel out of charge heavy stance into a guard break, and that will catch a dodge on prediction. You cannot do that on reaction. You can also bait a dodge with your charge heavy, soft faint into a full block, and punish that dodge on reaction with a buffered bash. Do note that this is reaction dependent, as quicker reactions are able to avoid the bash consistently. You can also punish prediction dodges against delayed bash timing on reaction. You can do this by doing an empty forward dodge, charging a heavy, and then cancelling that charge heavy into a buffered bash on reaction to the enemy's prediction dodge on delayed bash timing. I found this to be the most consistent if I'm already a charging a heavy to begin with, but I have done it out of neutral as well. You can do something similar if even after a successful shield bash. Basically, you just can't charge a heavy and cancel back into shield bash again. Most people after getting hit by one bash just go into, oh, I'm getting hit by a light, I accept that mode. So they're pretty much not going to be expecting a second shield bash to be coming out of nowhere. This can be effective if the enemy is just one more shield bash away of going out of stamina, or if you have shield bash up in minion or breach and that extra 6 damage would kill them. If you manage to get somebody into a corner, you can use this same tech to be able to pretty much infinite them in that corner until either you or the enemy runs out of stamina. Uh, this is really situational because it's very dependent on the degree of the corner because half of them didn't work, but it's something good to keep in mind. Usually if there's a corner, I don't even bother with this. I know that shield bashes become much more difficult to dodge in a corner, so I just boost up my offensive playstyle and try to get a bit more damage in rather than going for this pseudo-infinite. I wouldn't recommend going for your sprinting bash all that much because it has pretty absurd recovery, but it is 400 milliseconds if you space it correctly, so that is unreal. Uh, if you do land it, you do get zero damage, but one shield bash mix-up. You'll always be within range for one singular bash mix-up, so you have your potential for damage, but doesn't actually confirm any damage itself. Alright, Conquer also has this change bash. It's 800 milliseconds, so it really sucks. It really sucks, don't use it. But, if you do use it, you can cancel the recovery with a heavy attack to stuff a guard break. Basically, if that interaction happened, you made this mistake of using that in the first place, the enemy made a mistake of going for a guard break punish on it. Everybody's stupid. This shouldn't have happened. Last thing I'll mention for today is something I get caught with fairly often, so I'll let you guys know so you don't get caught with it as often as I do. And that is, if somebody's trying to outspace you and keep out of your shield bash range, uh, they're probably going to go for a guard break and try to catch your forward dodge when you're trying to close that distance there. So... Just be wary of that, you can't just spam empty forward dodges, because you, you can be punished for it. So that's all I really have for today. Uh, if I didn't include something in this guide, it's either because I feel it's not important enough to really care about, or I forgot to take a recording of it, and I didn't want to go back and re-record, because I'm a lazy piece of shit. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed, and that hopefully you learned at least something new. And I'm looking forward to being able to make more guides in the future. 
I hope everybody makes some expert gamer plays as a result of this, and I hope to see everybody in the next video. See ya.